Yeah, hi there. This is a video I wanted to do for quite some time because once a week I got asked which is the best controller, man, you need to know. And that's actually the wrong question because I cannot tell you what is the best controller because only you can answer that. There is nothing like the best at all. If you buy a car or whatever, there's nothing like the best. It's only the best for your task you first need to think about what is your actual use case you might even have several use cases and for that there might be no the best controller you might even need to get several ones or even none at all so in this video i just will give you some food of thought for making your decision first thing to think about is where do you want to use that controller do you want to use it live so on stage or even for traveling if you're on a train if you regularly for example do longer journeys or you only want to use it in your studio or for both with both of these things you should consider robotic so if you take it on the tour, carry it around in, in your bag, for example, every day, robustness is absolute a topic. So don't get cheap plastic crap in that use case. Size is also an issue. And uh, if you go on stage, the time to set up for a controller is also a thing to consider. If you only have to plug in a USB cable, that's very fast. If you need to plug in a wall ward and bring that with you as well, you have additional stuff to set up. So that's things uh, to consider is the intended use case mixing so you want to change volume panorama sense edit device parameters so the classical mixing process that's the first question to think about if you're in that area totally think about motor faders because i only really started using controllers for mixing until i got motor faders and for me even it had to be six because with eight faders it's just stepping up and down and every song you do nowadays has more than eight uh, tracks so it's very hard to mix a song if you have only eight faders and from my experience absolute faders which do not pick up the values are totally useless and you will never use them as an alternative you can think about relative knobs but that only makes sense if you have a display with that knob so you can see the actual value and then it's also always at the correct position with that okay uh, keyboard do you want to have a keyboard so you're the classical piano style and you're more like a player that's something to consider instead you want to use it for drum playing for example or you want just to trigger clips so if you look at the keyboard there's okay very in your face idea is how many keys do you need for playing are you okay with two octaves do you need three or do you need a full size 88 key piano keyboard do you need other features what about aftertouch are you into that uh, or are you even into more uh, experimental or modern controllers which support mpe which might not even have the classical piano style but are nevertheless intended to be played and you might also want to have the classical additional controls for that like the pitch bender or a modulation wheel thinking about trumpets and clips this are sometimes sold as the same thing but i think you need to think about what suits your needs cause if you want to use them for drum pads, I guess it's better if they were a bit larger. So the size matters in that case. And for clips, uh, they can also be a bit smaller and you need more for clips with, if you only want to drum, I think with four to four uh, drum grid, so 16 pads are fine, but for triggering clips, it should be definitely a 8.8 .8 matrix for that. I did not add DJing in that because I think Bitwig is the wrong tool for that task. I tried to support once a um, DJ controller, but that was no fun. And I think it, yeah, just don't do that. There is better software for that task. Um, I also have some other ideas for you to think about before you jump into buying a controller. I think first question is, is it really a time saver for you? And does it speed up your workflow? Because I know a lot of people, including me, which have a controller 
controller and then just don't use it because you're faster with the, your standard PC keyboard and your mouse. So really you need to test it. So maybe if you can go to a shop and they can give it you maybe for, for testing before you buy it. I think this would be something great to do or maybe you can borrow it from your friend and see if it really speeds up your workflow. You also need to think if you're using it in the studio, it also it takes up some space. So you need to have the space on your desk or beneath your desk and maybe you're even better uh, if you just learn on your keyboard what are shortcuts and you can also be very fast with that. Something that's also always true, don't buy cheap crap. Um, I think all the controllers got much better now and I don't really know one which does not work at all. And I think if you go with the big names in the industry like Novation, the Ableton, Push, uh, Yamaha, Aturia, um, who else did I forget? Uh, Native Instruments, all those companies, they make very solid stuff and you cannot really go wrong with that. There are subtle differences and you should check out if that fits your needs. Bitwig supports touch, so that's also something you could try out, but touch devices are pretty expensive, so this might be an issue for you. But nevertheless, try that as well. If you also have quite some money uh, to spend on your hobby or your business, you can also try the very big one from Microsoft, for example, with touch. So that's really, really nice to use, but very expensive as well. So not everybody can go for that. And you also need some space on your desk to put that in place. I hope I could give you some ideas. What is the best controller for your use case? And that's a question you should ask yourself before buying that. And if you found one or multiple ones or get tons of those controllers like I do, make some funky music. Thank you.